In the previous video, we talked about how to find the magnitude and direction of a vector. And towards the end of that video, I mentioned that this was specific to vectors in the first quadrant. And what I mean by that is let's go ahead and take a look at this vector right here. I'm going to physically move it so that the tail of the vector is at the origin of this coordinate axis that I've drawn. And when I move it there, you can see, oh yeah, pointing towards the first quadrant. For a vector in the second quadrant, you can put that tail at the coordinate axis, and hey look, there it is, pointing towards quadrant 2. So I've got four vectors here, each of them pointing in a different quadrant. So let's take a look at how finding the direction is going to change from vector to vector. As a quick recap about what we did, we broke our vectors into components. And to do that, we put our pencil at the tail of the vector, and we found out how far to the right it points. And that was our x component and we figured out how far up it points, and that was our y component. Now in the previous video, I turned on the grid line so that I could make sure everything was exact and perfect, but in this one we're going to be a little bit loosey-goosey. These pictures aren't drawn to scale, so we're just going to go ahead and say that we traveled 7 units to the right, and we traveled 4 units up. So 7 was our x component, and 4 was our y component. So we can actually write this down in what's called component form. Using these angle brackets here, we can put our x component and then our y component. And now this perfectly describes this red vector right here. You travel 7 units to the right and 4 units up, and you'll have that vector. So to find the magnitude of the vector, we used Pythagorean theorem, 7 squared plus 4 squared, take the square root of that, and then you'll get the length. But in this one, we're going to talk more about that direction. As a reminder, your direction is going to be what angle your vector is pointing at. And we found that direction by using SOHCAHTOA, looking at those trig functions. We tried to figure out which trig function uses the opposite and the adjacent. And we discovered that using tangent of theta would give us this direction right here. So tangent of theta would be our y component divided by our x component. So doing a little bit of rearranging, you'll find out that theta is equal to the inverse tangent, or arctan, of y over x. Now for us, that'd be 4 over 7. And when you go ahead and plug that into your calculator, make sure you're in the correct mode. If you want degrees, change your calculator to degrees. If you want radians, make sure your calculator's been changed to radians. So after plugging that in, we get 29.744 degrees which means that our final direction was 29.744 degrees. And what that means is if I were to take this vector and again move it to that origin, then you can also see here I've drawn in the degrees. And this is identical to those degrees that we use for unit circle. So what we mean when we say 29.744 degrees is we mean that to go from the positive x-axis up to our vector, we travel 29.744 degrees. And that works out perfectly in the, if you're in the first quadrant. But it doesn't work out so nicely if you're not in the first quadrant. So let's take a look at what changes when we're in the second quadrant, for example. So let me go ahead and move this vector back over here. And we're going to take a look at this second vector. This time, we're traveling to the left and then up. Let's go ahead and keep our components the same, 7 to the left and 4 up. This time our component form is going to be negative 7 because it's 7 to the left and positive 4 because it's 4 up. Keep those angle brackets. Now depending on what's going on you might end up putting negative 7 right here. But me personally, we're talking about the length that I travel and length is always positive. So I leave it as a positive 7. So some of you guys might be more comfortable putting that as negative 7 because it's to the left 7. So when we want to find this degree, sorry, this angle, we're going to use our trig functions again. And it turns out we can also use tangent of theta, and it'll be y over x. But what about those people that decided to put negative 7? Well, that's a real easy fix. Let's take the absolute value of it. 
Now both people are going to end up using positive 7 and positive 4 for those x and y values respectively. So again, doing a little bit of algebra and rearranging, we'll find out inverse tangent of the absolute value of y over x. And let's go ahead and replace those with our numbers. So our y component was 4 and our x component was 7. Again, negative 7 if you decided to use that negative. And when you plug that into your calculator, you'll notice that it's also going to be 29.744 degrees. But how is that possible? Because this vector's pointing towards the second quadrant. If we're looking at this angle, we're going from the positive x-axis to here. This is our direction. And this is way bigger than 29.744 degrees. And the reason is because we actually calculated the reference angle. If you look on our triangle over here, we calculated this angle. That's the angle we discovered, which is again our reference angle. Reference angle is always that positive angle to the nearest horizontal. So how can we figure out what the real angle should be? Well, the easiest way to do that is to think of it as a reference angle. Our goal is to figure out how far we're going to end up having to travel. So for quadrant 2, our official direction is going to be almost 180. We just have to take away a little bit. So we're going to put down 180 degrees, and we're going to take away just a little bit. And that little bit that we're going to take away is that reference angle that we discovered. So the direction that we want is going to be 180 degrees minus, let me fix this up, 180 degrees minus that reference angle that we had. So let's go ahead and put down here, let's call this theta ref, because that's our reference angle, which means our final direction is going to be 180 minus 29.744 degrees. And when I plug that into my calculator, I'll end up with 150.255 degrees. So let's go ahead and move this guy back over down towards its proper location. And we'll see what, if anything, changes for the third quadrant. So again, for the third quadrant, we're going to travel to the left, and then we're going to travel down. So notice I'm always doing the horizontal component first and then the vertical component. There's a reason I'm doing that. That'll guarantee that I'm always looking at the reference angle. So again, let's keep it all consistent here. Let's go 7 to the left and 4 down. That'll be negative 7, negative 4. And if I want to find this reference angle, so let's go ahead and denote it with that theta, then again, I'm going to use tangent of theta. Tangent of theta equals the absolute value of y over x. Again, to go ahead and correct whether somebody wants to use those negatives. So in our case here, inverse tangent of absolute value, our y component was 4, x component was 7. And you guessed it, the reference angle is still going to pop out as the exact same. Because we haven't changed any of these components, all of them will have that reference angle of 29.744. So what's different for quadrant 3? Well, for quadrant 3, let's go ahead and move our vector over so we can see it in action. For quadrant 3, we're going to be a little bit bigger than 180. So in order to figure out this direction, we're going to go ahead and take that 180 degrees. And instead of subtracting the reference angle, we want to be bigger than 180. So we're going to add the reference angle. So for our quadrant 3 angle, our final direction is going to be 180 plus 29.744 degrees. Sorry, 74, yeah, 744 degrees. And we're going to end up with, give me one moment to finish plugging this in, we're going to end up with 
0.744 degrees. Now I'm sure some of you guys can go ahead and guess what we're going to do for quadrant 4, but at this point you should have recognized at least the pattern that we're going to be going horizontal first, and then vertical second. And again, we'll give it components of 7 and 4, giving us a component form of to the right 7 units and down 4 units. Since I've shown you this a couple times already, I'm going to go ahead and skip straight down saying that reference angle is going to still be 29.744 degrees. So let's take a look at this vector on the axes and see if we can figure out what this angle is going to be. Now a lot of people are tempted to use the vertical angles at this point. Notice we've never said anything about the 90 and 270. The reference angle is always with respect to your horizontal. So we calculated this 29.744. That's the reference angle for this. So our angle is almost 360, but it's a little bit less than that. So we're going to go ahead and take that 360 for our quadrant 4 and say that that direction is equal to 360 and we're going to take away just a little bit and that little bit is going to be our reference angle. So for quadrant 4 our final direction is going to be 360 minus that 29.744 and we end up with 330.255 degrees. So what we've done right here is we figured out some equations to work through. I'm not a huge fan of memorizing equations. I have a terrible memory, so I like to figure it out like, just like I did over here. But if you're the kind of person that needs some uh, memorization to go through here, again, strongly discourage. I would love for you to understand what's going on because then you can derive it very very quickly. So the last thing that I don't have on here is for the quadrant one angle and that's because your quadrant one angle, oh, that's not the quadrant, your quadrant one angle is always just going to be that theta that you discovered. So for quadrant one your direction will always just be that reference angle. So the short version of this is in order to find the direction you're always going to do that arc tan of y over x and then depending on which quadrant you're going to have to either add or subtract that from 180 or subtract it from 360 or just leave it alone 